Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of our Fusion 360 Tech Thursday. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis from Autodesk and today's topic we're going to be talking about photogrammetry. It's kind of a hard word to say um, and I'll probably mess it up multiple times as we're going through, um, but this is kind of a cool topic. Uh, this is something I find really interesting. Uh, but how technology is changing the way we design. Um, and what I mean by that is, for example, let's say I wanted to create a pretty cool rendering of this Makita um, grinder here. And instead of just having it on a white background, maybe I want to have it on like a big chunk of rock or something like that. But how long would it have taken for me to model something like this big rock? So there's actually technology called photogrammetry. And what that is, is it basically takes a whole bunch of pictures and you kind of like rotate around the object and you take a bunch of pictures and the software figures out where the camera angles are and actually builds the 3D object for you automatically. And I'm gonna show you some pretty neat examples. Um, this is becoming extremely popular, uh, especially in the last few years. Um, some neat things, let me actually share this with you. Um, being a space junkie myself, um, Autodesk was actually asked by the Smithsonian to scan the Apollo 11. And this was huge because they've had this, you know, in the Smithsonian and it's been, you know, basically hasn't been touched in years and Autodesk was asked to come in and scan. So I'm gonna kind of scroll through this document. But what it basically did is we were able to scan the whole inside of the Apollo 11. And here you can actually see people from Autodesk um, doing this 3D scan. So we have a bunch of different kinds of laser scanners. We scan the inside and the outside. And, um, oops, <laughs> I was sharing the wrong window. Let me, uh, let me scroll back up here, I apologize. Uh, so, here is that you can kind of see the scanner inside um, the Apollo 11. And I'll show you the results here in just a moment. Uh, but you can kind of see here they are actually scanning the inside and the outside. So, um, okay, so just a second here. It says I'm not, okay, there we go. Um, making sure everything's going okay. So, you can kind of see that they were able to scan the inside and the outside. And what this did is it actually created a 3D representation. Um, and you can find this by just searching for um, Apollo 11 3D scan. And you can go out to the Smithsonian webpage and they've actually like labeled everything. You can kind of jump through and see a bunch of different areas of the scan. And I don't know how well this is sharing uh, through the live stream, uh, but you can kind of see it talks about the crew compartment. It'll talk about some of the other areas like the seats and the uh, windows, etc. And what was neat about this was that they uh, the scanning was so precise that they actually found graffiti written by the astronauts next to the seats, which weren't visible unless you you know stuck your head or whatever down into that area. And um, even the people in the Smithsonian didn't know about this until we were able to scan that data. And uh, you can actually see that here. The other cool thing about this is if you scroll down, um, so this is actually, I highly recommend watching this. It talks about how Autodesk scanned everything um, in the story, but they also have some downloads. So you can actually download these models. For example, the pilot seat or or a control panel or even the exterior. So, for example, if I jump over here, here is that actual scan of the exterior of the Apollo 11 module. So, I could 3D print this. I could uh, do whatever I want with this. It's kind of kind of cool. Now, I mentioned that I'm uh, I'm really bad. I apologize. I keep not sharing the right window. So here is a representation of the Apollo module. So um, this is what I downloaded off that Smithsonian webpage. This was created using our. Uh, let's see if make sure everything's working okay. Okay, Aaron, if you can let me know everything's going okay. 
if you don't mind sending me a, a text message. Um, okay, so this is was created using photogrammetry. Um, somebody didn't sit there and model this. They actually just used a whole bunch of pictures. And in this example here where I uh, created this rock, basically all we did was walk around a rock. <laughs> so, and took multiple pictures. So I'm just gonna bring this up. So you can kind of see, I'm just gonna kind of click through. You just kind of walk around and take a bunch of different pictures. And then the software will combine this, figure it out and turn it into a 3D model. So you'll notice different levels, different, um, you know, kind of high up pictures, kind of more horizontal pictures. Um, and it actually figures out how to make that rock. And that's the exact same rock you see right here. Now I'm going to talk about how we edit these meshes, how you bring them in, how you create photogrammetry, etc. So um, let me just kind of walk through here really quick. We have a couple different products. So Autodesk has a product called Recap Photo. And you can search for this on Google but it's called Recap Photo. And what this allows you to do is to actually bring in pictures and then it figures out how to turn it into a 3D model. And it does a wonderful job. In fact, here is um, that rock. So you can kind of see there, I'll go ahead and bring this open. And here is the result that you get. Now you'll notice that there's some weird stuff going on kind of around. And I'll talk about this here in a little bit, but you can definitely see the rock. And notice it's even textured in here. So all I did was take those photos where we walked around the rock, um, brought it in, and it created this. Now I can come in here and change my visualization. Let's just look at it kind of as a solid with no texture. Um, and again, I'm not teaching exactly a step-by-step -step how to do this. Um, but more just kind of the process of what you can do with it. So here's what the end result is really happening. It's actually creating all these little tiny triangles, which is an STL file. Okay. So, but you'll also notice that there's a lot of garbage going on around, around this. Now we have a couple different options for you here. So I can clean it up right here in Recap Photo which actually works quite well. So you'll see over here under edit, we can do what's called slice and fill, uh, surface tools, delete selection, fill holes. I mean, there's a lot of really cool options in here, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you, for example, let's just select with a lasso. I'm just gonna kind of draw around this region right here, and then I can say delete the selection, and you'll see that it actually removes all of this extra stuff. And I personally highly recommend that you do this before you bring it over to Fusion. And the reason for that is you saw all of those little tiny triangles, right? That's gonna take up memory. That's gonna take up time uh, in Fusion. So the cleaner we can get this looking um, and the less triangles, the easier it'll be. So I'm using Recap Photo in this example. And I'll show some other uh, tools that are out there that you can use. Um, this one I think is subscription based, uh, so, but extremely, extremely powerful. Okay, so, so basically what I've done here is um, I've, I've deleted a majority of those faces. I'm just gonna kind of rotate this around and we can kind of see what this looks like, okay? So I got rid of a lot of the garbage. The next thing I could do is I could come in here and um, do like slice and fill. And this allows you to basically slice through. So I'm gonna kind of come up until I don't see any more of that ground area, okay? This looks like there's just a little bit right here. So I might go up just a little tiny bit more. And you can see I can fill or no fill. I'm gonna go ahead and say fill and it's gonna slice all of that stuff away and basically fill that bottom area. So I'm left with just the rock, okay? 
Now we'll come back to this in just a moment. Okay, there's other tools out there. Um, this one I've been using recently, um, it's called Mesh Room. <laughs> Sounds like mushroom, but it's called Mesh Room and pretty much the same idea. You bring in all of your images and so you can kind of see, um, and this is just a sample data set I downloaded um, off of the web, but it's basically just a bunch of different pictures of a statue. And after you run the, uh, the commands, it goes through and it actually shows you where all of the cameras are, where it thinks all the cameras are. And I'm gonna zoom out and you can actually see that it, it captured and it kind of rotates pretty substantially here. It captured even the uh, geometry of the buildings that are around and everything like that. But notice how complex this mesh is. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of, of triangles. And in fact, as I zoom, it's really touchy. <laughs> as I zoom in here, it's going to um, go to the statue and you'll see that, I mean, it's, it's a really high resolution um, mesh. So for example, if I come in here and uh, turn on textured, I can turn off um, some of these other gizmos and stuff like that. It'll turn off all these dots or whatever, and you'll see a very, very fine mesh. And then it exports it out as an OBJ. But what's neat about this is it actually figured out from the pictures where these pictures were taken, where the cameras were to generate this 3D model. And so you can kind of see they did some high camera positions and they did some lower camera positions just walking around. And I'm going to talk about how you um, actually capture the images here in just a little bit. So I used, um, in this case, I used Meshroom. I exported it out and here is the result. After cleaning all of that extra garbage out of there, you can kind of see the result of this. Now, it's not perfect, right? It's, it's got some bumpy textures and stuff like that. It's only going to be as good as your pictures are. But this is a great way to get um, shapes that you would not normally be able to model very easily into Fusion. Now here's a real world example. Um, I was helping a customer. They designed those cardboard display units that you see in like Home Depots and 7-Elevens and stuff like that. And they were um, asked to create one for uh, chips, you know, for bags of chips. And they were able to create that cardboard display um, in, you know, mere moments, right? They're professionals at that. They had no problems with that. But then they wanted to create a realistic representation and they needed to model a bag of chips. And they told me they spent, you know, days trying to create a bag of chips, kind of like this, right? But it's got it's got wrinkles, it's got texture, it's you know narrow at the top and wide in the middle, etc. And they had a really hard time modeling that. So I showed them how to use photogrammetry, and um, let me see if I I thought I had it up here. Yep, here we go. Um, using photogrammetry, you can create a bag of chips. <laughs> You know, I just threw a decal on here. In fact, I did this about five minutes before the, the meeting started, so I didn't do anything on the back yet. But again, think about how long it would take to model something like this, where they just wanted to have something in there for a, a good rendering. So here is that uh, bag of chips. So you can kind of see what it looks like. Okay, and again, think about how long it would take to model something like this. So photogrammetry is extremely useful. So let me kind of walk through here. Um, let's show about how I brought this rock into Fusion. So I did the, the photogrammetry in uh, Recap Photo. So let me uh, go back to my dashboard here. So, you know, here is the rock. This was the... Uh, the uh, solution that it came up with. Okay. Now in this example here, I have not cleaned it up. I just exported it 
out of recap photo and I brought it into fusion so um, okay so here in recap I'm going to click on this little icon here and say export oh I see that there's some lag going on I uh, am um, <laughs> give me just a second here Bear with me. Okay. It could be, I apologize, it looks like we're getting some lag. It could be because I have so many things open on my screen right now. Um, hopefully it's not sucking all the memory out of here. Um, wow. Okay. Says everything's working okay. Again, I apologize for the delay. Um, I will keep going and hopefully uh, it gets caught up. So let me go ahead and I'm going to exit out of some of the. Uh, products here just in case it's taking up too much memory okay okay let's see uh, where we're at now okay so um, you can see that this needs to get cleaned up and I like I showed you can clean this up in uh, the recap photo app so yeah, I was just Aaron just texted me said close some apps. <laughs> so um, let me go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one also, and uh, hopefully that cleans things up a little bit. Okay, um, and then I'll talk more about editing inside of Fusion because that's the key thing I want to do right here. So okay. You can see um, we need to clean this up. I showed that you can do it in Recap Photo, which I recommend, but let's just say um, you don't have that ability to do that. Um, so I'm going to come in here and say Export Model. Now the, here's some interesting stuff. You'll notice that we can export as many different file formats. So OBJ and then OBJ Quads. And we're going to come back to this here in a moment, but typically you can export as OBJ and then you'll notice that you have the ability to specify a target face count. Now what they mean by this is if I go to uh, my wireframe you can see that there are a lot of triangles here. Now do we need this many triangles to create the representation that we're trying to get? So you could actually come in here and change the target, um, you know, face count to let's just say, you know, 50,000 or something like that. Okay. Um, I could also come in here and change the percentage. So you can see as I'm dragging down, it's decreasing the number. So we're going to try and decimate this by 80%, for example. So again, depending on how perfect uh, or how much detail you need, um, you would want to change this okay okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue on here give me just a quick second okay so then I would hit export and it will go ahead and export out I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't want it to use up resources but that's what I did so I just exported it out and then I came into my data panel and I just said upload We'll select the file and um, I'll just go into my, here's all the images. So I'm going to go into my downloads real quick. And here is the OBJ file um, that was created. Okay, so I just, and you can see it's a, um, you know, almost like 10 megabytes. So I would upload that into, um, Fusion. And so that's what we did. Again, I'm saving time by not doing it, but you, this is the result that you get. Now, I purposely didn't clean this up because I wanted to show that you can actually edit meshes 
inside of Fusion. I get this question a lot. Uh, you know, how can I edit STLs? How can I edit scan data? Now there's a couple steps that we need to do before we start. And the first one is to go into your preferences. So I'm going to click on preferences. And we need to turn on the preview. So I'm going to come over here to preview. We need to turn on mesh workspace. And you can see it's the very first one on the list. So you'll need to activate that. You'll need to turn that on. Otherwise, you're not going to see some of the options that I'm about to show. Okay. Now, if I expand open my, uh, my bodies folder here, let me uh, open this up, we'll see this little icon. And you can see it's labeled rock. And this is my mesh. If I right mouse click on it, I can say edit. Okay. And this is going to take me into my mesh workspace. So now we can see I'm in my mesh workspace. I've got a bunch of different mesh commands in here. So you would not see this if we did not turn on the uh, preferences, the mesh option in the preferences. Okay, I appreciate the feedback on, in the uh, chat window. Looks like things are going a little bit better. I apologize. <laughs> My, uh, I guess I need to ask for a more powerful computer. Um, but as you can see, we're actually dealing with you know large number of triangles. And I have quite a few open right now, so that's probably part of it. Now you'll notice as I'm moving around, I get this cool little you know shadow, but this is actually a paint selection. So typically you're used to probably like window selection, but we also have free form, which is like a lasso. And then we have this paint selection. And what's neat about this is it allows you to basically paint on your geometry. So I'm just kind of clicking and dragging and you can kind of see how it's selecting all of those faces. And with something as complicated as a mesh, you would definitely want something like this. Now, I just selected this region here. I could come in here and say, for example, delete faces. And what that's going to do is it's going to delete the faces that we've selected. Okay. And sure enough, there you can kind of see the result. Okay, so I'm going to walk through these mesh commands real quick. The very first one is remesh. Um, it basically just recreates a mesh. And I don't use this one all that often. The one I use the most is reduce. Now, I showed that you could do this even before you bring it into uh, Fusion, which I recommend. But let's say you get it into Fusion and you're like, you know what? I don't need this many triangles. So I could come in here and say reduce. Now let's kind of zoom up here a little bit. And um, again, it's asking for mesh faces. Now, just for fun, in fact, you can see how, look how detailed this is. You can even see the brick <laughs> down here next to the rock. I think that's pretty cool. But I'm just gonna come over here somewhere and let's just select um, a region over here. And I can come in and reduce the density. So, Take a look at what's going to happen here. We're basically saying reduce it by, uh, you know, three quarters, basically. I'm going to um, turn on my preview, and we're going to see that the triangles in this little blue area, there's less of them. But we're still able to see the bumps on the, on the ground, like you can see over here. So, again, I highly recommend reducing the density as much as you can um, before you start, until you start seeing, um, you know, losing some detail or whatever. Okay, so you can see how detailed it is over here, and we've reduced quite a few triangles over there. I'll go ahead and say OK so we can kind of see what this looks like. Now, obviously, I would do this to the whole um, model, but I'm going to show you some other tips and tricks here in just a moment. Okay. So there is the finished result. Now, we still see some bumps going on, but obviously it's not as detailed as what we see over here. So again, you have to decide how far can you reduce. 
And we'll come back to that here in just a moment. We also have, you know, create a closed mesh. So it turns it into a watertight solid. Um, and typically you want to try and get into a watertight solid. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Now I'm going to skip a couple of these because I want to get to um, this plain cut. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on plain cut. And then it's asking uh, for a plane. So I'm just going to go ahead and click. Um, for, actually, I'm going to click on the mesh body first of all. And then it's going to create a plane. Now, it did it vertically, but I can go ahead and rotate this horizontally. So I'm just going to kind of rotate this plane. Now, again, notice how long it's taking to do some of these actions. And that's because of how many triangles. In fact, you can, you can see it's thinking quite a bit. It's, you know, it has a lot of little faces and edges that's trying to figure out. So if you can clean it up before you bring it into Fusion, you'll probably be happier. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this up a little bit. You can kind of see how it's removing some of those other triangles as it's slicing up through this rock. So you can kind of see how it got rid of a lot of that because it's basically creating a flat bottom like so. Okay. And you'll notice it's trimming it. And we have different fill types, no fill, uniform, or minimal. Now you'll notice mine is set to minimal. And if I kind of zoom up here, you can see that it, it's going to basically create a flat face. And it had to create some triangles to kind of fill that in. If I say no fill, it's going to be hollow. You're going to see up inside of the rock. Okay. So there you can kind of see with no fill. And then if I say uniform, it's going to basically try and create this flat surface um, using uniform sized triangles. So you can kind of see the result you get there. And again, it really depends on what is your end result. Are you trying to 3D print this? Are you trying to manufacture it out of foam? You know, um, is it a rendering, whatever. So I personally, I usually do the minimal fill. Um, I think it almost keeps it flatter than the other one does. So I'm going to say minimal and it's going to use a lot less triangles. So I'll say OK. And now I have this flat rock. So I just basically removed all of the sidewalk and the ground around the rock. Now I still have some some geometry over here that's kind of a pain. So let's just come in and say delete. And you'll notice again this little shadow here. Okay, this is our paint selection. Now, here's a couple tricks. If I go under the select menu, I can turn on this mesh palette. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And now you see we have a brush size scroller. So, I'm going to drag that a little bit bigger. And you can see how my paintbrush is bigger. If I drag this smaller, it becomes smaller. Now here's a tip. If you don't want to use this drag, you can use your left bracket and your right bracket on the keyboard. So for example, if I hit my left bracket a couple times, you can see how the uh, selection is getting smaller. If I hit the right bracket, you're going to see the selection get bigger. Okay, so that's how you can change the size um, using your keyboard instead of using the little dragger. Okay. Um, you also notice it says select back faces. I highly recommend you have this turned on, but again, it depends on what you're trying to do. If I'm only trying to select some stuff on the front here, um, I want to turn that off. If I'm trying to select this whole rock, I want to turn this on because I, I basically just want to kind of brush over this rock and have it select everything, including all of the faces on the back that you can't really see. So let me show you what I mean by this. Um, right now it says select back faces. So I'm just going to kind of click here and then move my mouse off of the uh, rock. But if I rotate around, you can see that it picked through and it grabbed faces all the way through. Okay, if, let me go ahead and exit out of this real quick. If I had um, 
let's go ahead and do this again. Turn that off and I, I click. You'll notice it's going to select those front faces, but it's not going to grab anything on the back. You can't really see anything on the back. So that's what those are for. Okay. Then we have expand face group, connected. I mean, there's a lot of different um, you know, selections here. So you can grow or shrink. It tells you how many faces. So, so you can kind of see here, I've selected 19, or I'm sorry, 17,000 faces. If I just click on grow a little bit, you're gonna see this number go up as it's just slightly um, grabbing more and more faces as I click on this. So instead of having to keep painting over and over again to select more faces, I can just say, hey, grow that selection a little bit. So now we went to 21,000, okay? Okay, so I, I wanna talk about getting rid of this guy, so I'm gonna exit out of there. Let's come in and say, uh, delete faces. I personally recommend making um, the uh, selection as big as possible, um, but not too big. So I'm just gonna go something like this. I might turn on my uh, mesh, mesh palette and I'm gonna make sure back faces is selected. So let's just go ahead and maybe get this a little bit bigger. And I don't wanna do something like this because it's gonna select the rock, right? So I'm just gonna kind of rotate a little bit and just drag and kind of scrub over this whole region here. So I'm just kind of dragging over it. I'll do the same thing over here. And we can see that it selected all of those faces. Okay. And I'll say, okay, and it's going to delete those faces. So that paintbrush is extremely useful. And if I uh, hit fit now, we can see that there's no extra faces anywhere. And I've cleaned up this little rock area. Okay. Now, again, uh, I personally recommend cleaning it up in other tools. Uh, there's another tool, I, I'll open it up here in a moment, called Mesh Mixer. It's an Autodesk product that's free. It's extremely powerful. In fact, what you're seeing inside of Fusion is actually Mesh Mixer technology. We've, we've ported that over into Fusion. So um, Mesh Mixer is its own separate product. Um, you can search for it. Like I mentioned, it's free, extremely powerful. Uh, there's lots of videos out on YouTube on how to use Mesh Mixer, um, especially if you're doing a lot of editing of STLs. I highly recommend using that instead of Fusion. What I've shown here in Fusion is, okay, I've got something in, but I need to tweak with it a little bit. I wanna slice, remove some stuff. I need to delete some faces. Uh, in fact, I'll show you um, in this example here, um, this is another scan that I did. This is just a little knickknack that we have sitting on our dining room table or something like that. And you can see I used photogrammetry to basically walk around, take some pictures of it. However, I didn't take enough pictures and there's some voids underneath. So we can kind of see like this hole right here. So again, I'll come in here. And here is an interesting thing. I right click on um, this mesh right here and you don't see edit, okay? Now the reason for that is I wanna come in here and capture the design history. So I'm gonna right click and say capture design history. Now if I right click on the bird, you can see that we can edit it. So if you don't see that command, you might want to capture the design history. So I'm gonna go ahead and say edit and it puts me into my mesh tools. Okay, so I skipped over a couple of these and one of them was erase and fill. This is actually a really useful command. You can see it says fills a hole or erases a section. So I'm gonna go ahead and say erase and fill. Now, in this example, I wanna make my selection much smaller. So I'm gonna hit my little left bracket a couple times um, to get the uh, icon to be smaller, or um, sometimes it's faster to turn on your mesh palette and just drag this to the left. But you can kind of see how, um, as I click, click my left bracket, it, the selection window is getting a little bit smaller, or my brush size, I should say. So I'm gonna do something more like this, and 
all I have to do is kind of just drag around that hole like so. And watch what this does, okay? It's asking for the mesh faces, so I grabbed a selection. And then you can see that it actually filled that in. So it's basically healing that, that area there. I can control the density of you know how many triangles there are. So I increased it, and you'll see it does take a little moment for this to update, but you can see how I increased the density of that area, um, or I could decrease or whatever. And then I also have the ability to kind of change the weight. And what this means is, is it going like straight across? And it's going to be kind of hard to see here, but let me just change the weight a little bit. I'll crank this up pretty substantial. And so you'll see that it's going to be, instead of kind of a straight across, it's going to kind of smooth things out. In fact, you'll see, because I went so much, it created like a little bump almost. Okay, So you can control the weight of uh, filling that hole. So I use Erase and Fill quite a bit to fix um, geometry. So once this uh, finishes updating, I'll uh, click out of here and you can kind of see that it patched that hole. Okay, and there we go. Oops, too far. <laughs> so there you can see, you can't even really tell where the hole was anymore because it did such a great job. Now I could do the same thing over here. I would just draw around this region to select that and it would fill that hole. You can also use it to get rid of things. So for example, maybe I don't want this little wing right here. So I'm just gonna kind of draw something like so. And let's do the erase and fill. Right now I'm just in my selection. So let's come in here and say erase and fill. And it's going to remove that geometry the best that it can. It's just gonna try and smooth this out. I'll say okay. And you'll see that we're able to basically remove that little wingtip. So Fusion has some pretty powerful mesh editing tools. Okay, not as full, you know, as many as like um, a Mesh Mixer, for example, um, but it does have quite a bit. Okay, let me go ahead and escape out so you can kind of see what what we did there. Kind of filled that area in. I left the weight a little bit too high, so it looks like it kind of bulged a little bit, but that's okay. But you can kind of see how it was able to remove that particular wingtip. And so if I could now 3D print this, for example. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. What do I want to do here? So we, we fixed the rock. We fixed the bird. Um, so, so there's other commands in here, such as smoothing. Um, and again, I'm not going to cover every single one in here, but I'll go ahead and, and show smooth. So I could grab, let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Um, let me do my mesh palette. I'm going to crank this down a little bit. And let's just kind of drag a particular area like so. And you can see you can do like a factor. And so it's basically going to try and smooth this area out. Um, it's, it's not the same as the erase and fill. It's basically going to try and you know change the triangles a little bit to kind of smooth things and make it a, you know, a little bit less um, stark per se. Okay, let's go ahead and close and escape out. Okay, um, the other one in here, which I already showed, was a plain cut, uh, where it allows you to kind of slice through. And again, here's a prime example where I've got all of this extra geometry here, and I want to get rid of it. Now, earlier I showed doing the plain cut, and I kind of dragged up through the rock until it looked good. Here I'm going to show you a neat little trick. I'm gonna use a construction plane. So let's do an offset plane from here. And I'm gonna to start to drag up, okay? Now let's look at it kind of from the, from the front here. And I'm just gonna drag this up until I'm kind of cutting through a majority of this. So I know I'm getting rid of most of that. So I'll say okay. 
and I now have this plane that's kind of floating up here in space. And I can drag this bigger if I want to, just by grabbing the corners. Hopefully you know that trick, okay? So I can kind of visually see what's it gonna be cutting through. Now I'll come in and do my plane cut. What's the mesh body? Okay, and then you'll notice right here it's asking what is the plane? So I'm gonna come in and say this is the plane and it's gonna quickly, instead of me having to rotate these around or whatever, it's going to use that plane to slice through my design. And you can see it left just a little bit, so I could have moved my plane a little bit higher, but that's okay. I can just go ahead and delete um, those faces. But I find this much faster than rotating and dragging and waiting for the preview to happen. But you can see how we now have a nice flat bottom that this would sit on a, a tabletop, for example. And then I would just come in and you know delete these using the delete command, like we've already shown. Delete faces, I'm just gonna kind of scrub over that, say okay. So it selected those faces and uh, it's gonna delete those. Again, it takes a little moment to do this as it's calculating all of those triangles. But now I've created this and I could send it to my 3D printer and I fixed everything. You can even do some weird stuff, like you can scan yourself. Um, I don't recommend it, it's kind of freaky. <laughs> I don't like what I look like scanned or whatever, but you can kind of see, um, in fact, this was the image we used in the, uh, the title screen or whatever. Um, kind of cool, I think. Um, now let's take a look at this one. So this is a doll. Now you'll notice it looks slightly different. This has squares instead of triangles. You'll also notice not a lot of detail, but there's enough detail here that we can tell what it is, okay? Now what's cool about this, let me go ahead and minimize it. Um, I'm gonna come in here, expand, open the, uh, the body here, and I can say, um, for example, mesh to B rep. I could turn this into um, a, an actual B rep. Now, in this case, it's probably not gonna work because um, I haven't finished the bottom here. But let's go ahead, let me try something else real quick. I'm gonna capture design history. And let's go ahead and edit this mesh. Let me see, I always forget where it is, I apologize. I can also turn this into a T-spline. Um, which you have to have quads to be able to do this. And man, I always lose where the convert is. Um, Aaron, maybe you can help me out. I, I did this in practice and now of course I can't find it. Um, why is that? I apologize guys. Um, <laughs> Shoot, uh, let me go into, here we go. I, okay, convert. So um, basically what I ended up doing, I went into my free form and then I come in here to convert. And you can see that this gives us the option to convert a quad mesh to T-splines. Now, if you're familiar with T-splines, that means we can actually physically edit this mesh. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say quad mesh to T-splines. I'll say okay. Now it's probably gonna come up with a warning. Um, looking at the chat window. Yes, I find my scan creepy. Uh, you can't argue with that. Um, so it's gonna convert this quad mesh into a T-spline body. Now it's gonna take a little bit of time to do this because there's quite a few quads, but you can kind of see here's our end result. Now what's neat about this is I can now edit this just like it's a T-spline. So for example, maybe I don't want her shoes to be quite so pointy. So let's come in here. I'm gonna select, um, let me make sure, yep, I can do all those. And I'm just gonna grab, um, 
Let me make sure. Uh, come in here. Okay. I want to select just a face and selecting the whole thing. Give me just a second here. I need to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Um, selection filters. Yeah. Oh, man. Mod oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Sorry. Modify. Edit form. I always forget this. I'm going to say edit form. Now it's going to allow me to edit this mesh. I um, so you can kind of see here, it's broken down into lots of tiny little faces. So if I were to click on this face, it's only going to edit that particular face. So if I grab on this, you're going to see that it's going to grab that face. And I'm going to pull that out a little bit. You can kind of see how weird that looks, right? So there is a cool option in here called Soft Modification. And what this allows you to do is to actually select one face and it's going to basically filter and select a lot more. And you can kind of see that by the colors. So we can see dark red all the way to kind of like a pink to a white. And that is done by these options here. So for example, if I set that to be smaller, let's just say five, you're gonna see that it's only gonna affect this little area here. But if I set this to be something larger, like 25, you'll see that it's gonna select a lot more. And what's dark red is gonna get affected the most, and what's white is gonna get affected the least, and everything in between is kind of a, a fall off. So we have smooth, linear, or, or bulge. So watch what happens when I grab, I've only grabbed this one little face, okay? Now I'm gonna tell it, oh, darn it, I clicked. Let me do the soft modification. Um, now we're gonna drag this down a little bit and you're gonna see that it's gonna affect all of those faces. We're basically moving her toe down like so, okay? Now, typically you can't really edit scan data very well like this, but the fact that it was a quad model and I was able to convert it to a T-spline, allows us to come in and make some tweaks. Now, with that said, I personally don't recommend editing scan data, um, you know, trying to manipulate it, because it's, it's painful, it's, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, but I showed you that you can. And this is kind of useful for, maybe you've brought something in and you just want to remove something um, like a, a, a boss, you know, like a screw boss or something like that, yeah, delete it off of there. Um, but if you need to kind of change the shape of something, like you've scanned in um, like a stormtrooper action figure or whatever, and you want to kind of change what it looks like, you can go in and do that. Now to do that, it has to be a quad mesh. And I told you I was gonna come back to here. And this is our, our rock example. Um, let me jump out here to the doll. Yeah. So here is the uh, the doll example. Okay. So you can kind of see what it looks like, kind of textured, all that kind of stuff. When I came to export, instead of OBJ, I changed this to OBJ quads. And you'll notice that it's a much simpler menu and you can also come in here and target, you know, you specify your target face count. So I, again, recommend the lower is better. So I left it at 10,000 and this is the result. This is the, the excuse me, the 10,000 faces. I can finish my form and it's going to finish our T-spline edit. Okay. Again, take some time, all that kind of stuff. So I'll let that, I'll let that kind of keep going. Um, so there, there we go. You can kind of see. I'm going to jump back to um, this guy here. Um, the other thing I think is really cool where they're using uh, photogrammetry is, again, at the Smithsonian, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of items in storage 
that are not on display but they're pretty cool. Maybe they're not on display because they're too big, or maybe they're not on display because people won't think that they're that exciting, like a pine cone, for example. Um, so they're actually using photogrammetry to scan all of these different objects, and you can go out and, and take a look at these and rotate them around. I mean, here's like a cicada or something like that, right? Um, and you have the ability to see all of these objects that you would not get to see in um, the Smithsonian. Another example, which unfortunately is sad, but I think is really cool that they're using photogrammetry for is in some of these places where these wars are going on, a lot of architectural type things are being destroyed like statues and monuments, etc. So they're gone. They're never ever gonna be able to be replaced. Well, they're actually using photogrammetry um, and people have written an algorithm that goes out and scans the internet for that particular thing. So let's just say, for example, uh, the Sphinx, right, in Egypt. Um, so, you know, obviously it's not destroyed, but they go out and they search for it. And so many people have taken pictures on their vacations or whatever. It brings all of those pictures together and there's enough of them to make... Uh, a you know an actual 3d representation of that they're also using it for the great barrier reef um, they have scuba divers taking pictures of the coral and then they come back a year or two later and they take the pictures again and they can compare those 3d models and see which areas are growing and unfortunately which areas are shrinking so you can kind of see some of the cool technology photogrammetry is being used for um, uh, again, being the uh, the nerd that I am, I mentioned um, I really like the the space stuff. You know, the fact that Autodesk was asked to uh, help scan um, the inside of the Apollo. Um, I personally recommend this book. I, this has nothing to do with the live stream, but if you're interested in the Apollo uh, missions, I read this book. It's great. Um, I don't work for Audible. I'm not getting paid or anything like that. This is just a personal. Um, you know, I, I recommend it. So, okay, so um, jumping back here, you can kind of see that sure enough, this converted um, into an, an actual object, okay? Now, you'll notice it, it shows as an open mesh, and unfortunately, that's because I did not fill this region in here, but if I went back in and, you know, did the slice or whatever and had it fill in, this would be an actual object, okay? So for example, if I come over here, um, let me do in the bodies, I think, make sure, let me uh, open this guy up. Why, why is it not opening? Oh, no, I did not do it on that one, I apologize. I know on some of these I did. Um, yeah, no, I guess I didn't. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Um, and then lastly, like I said, uh, actually this one I did. So you can kind of see here it's an actual body. I knew I did it on one of them. So, um, and of course, I'm showing the wrong screen again. I am not doing well this live stream. I apologize, guys. Um, I'm not used to having web pages <laughs> coming up. So this you can kind of see is an actual uh, body. So if I turn that guy off, you'll see it go away. Um, now, all I did here was just download an image of um, a Doritos logo or whatever off of the internet and add it on as a, as a decal. Uh, but again, think about how much time we saved by just doing some photogrammetry uh, to uh, create this chip bag instead of having to model it using T-splines or sweeps and lofts, etc. So, I'm going to end with talking a little bit more about how do you do the photogrammetry. Um, I'll keep it try, I'll try and keep it short here. Um, again, there's um, lots of tools out there. If you just do a search for photogrammetry, um, and you can see how to spell it in the uh, the live stream here. I mentioned um, Mesh Mixer. So Mesh Mixer um, allows you to bring in and edit the uh, the models very very easily um, this is an Autodesk product okay and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and import let's just go ahead and import that rock 
And again, you can see all of the different tools that we have over here on the right. So here is that rock and I can come in, I can sculpt on it, I can edit it, all this kind of stuff, export it out as OBJ. Um, and again, there's lots of videos out on YouTube on how to use Mess Mixer. This is kind of the, the de facto go-to product for editing meshes. It's very, very, very useful. Um, highly recommend that. Um, the other tool that I showed is called, um, let me go ahead and exit out of this, Recap Photo. Um, again, this is an Autodesk product. Uh, allows you to just bring in images. And let me show you, for example, this Doritos chip bag. How did I uh, go about doing this? So let me just come in here. And here's the actual, you know, sitting on my table here. I just set it up so it was kind of elevated a little bit. Um, that way I could get my camera kind of low underneath. And I just kind of walk around and take a bunch of different pictures from different angles. Okay, and the software then goes through and figures out, you know, what the angle is, etc. So let me just kind of keep rotating around. Um, and yeah, my dog made it in those pictures. That's funny. Uh, so you can kind of see I just walk all the way around, and again, hopefully this is sharing okay. Uh, and then I did like more some top view angles to kind of get some of the wrinkles and stuff like that. So probably about. 50 to 60 pictures. So it says it's not showing the screen. Uh, I think there's a lag <laughs> again. Okay, so I'll stop showing that. Okay, so with that, um, I'm gonna end here kind of at the top of the hour. I, I apologize for some of the technical difficulties. Um, photogrammetry is pretty um, intense so like I said some tips and tricks to take out of here um, make sure you um, minimize your mesh as much as you can um, until you start losing detail you want to have as much detail as you can um, but don't you don't need a hundred thousand triangles when you could get away with maybe 20,000 triangles um, so make sure you minimize that again I recommend um, trimming and deleting in some of the other tools such as Mesh Mixer and Recap Photo um, instead of using Fusion. Um, however you can in Fusion, uh, I recommend doing it in the other tools. That's what they're kind of designed for. Um, but I hope you got to see how you could bring in um, anything, anything you can take pictures of, bring it into Fusion, um, and use it for rendering, use it for 3D printing, use it for a product um, like, for example, the chip bag for um, the, the display case, for example. So um, it's not as precise as you would hope. Like, I can't take pictures of, like, jewelry and have it turn out beautiful. It's more for, like, larger things. Um, but it's really, really useful. And hopefully you found this um, live stream beneficial. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure you throw them into the chat window.